so as per the earlier discussion the most important character that is exhibited by coordination compounds are its color properties so coordination compounds will show wide variety of colors actually the color property of coordination compounds depends upon they absorb specified wavelength of ray electromagnetic radiation especially visible light and emits the another type of wavelength light this is the reason why some uh, all the metal complexes or coordination complexes the absorbing light is different from the light emitted from that metal complexes let us consider the color properties of coordination compounds explained with the help of crystal field theory so to for that i would like to consider one example hexa aqua titanium 3 plus complex in which titanium oxidation state is plus 3 and with one electron present in its d orbital so one electron present means always due to octahedral geometry that electron always present at t2g level now the electron present at t2g level of titanium plus 3 is going to observe blue green light uh, present around uh, its or visible light during this mechanism the electrons from t2g level excites to eg level so while the electrons returning from eg level to t2g level then there is the release of color violet color takes place so due to this titanium hexa aqua titanium 3 plus complex seems to be violet color and where by changing the mechanisms what is the changing the mechanisms sometimes cu s44 anhydrous copper sulfate is seems to be white color or colorless solid whereas cu s44 dot h2o 5 h2o exhibit blue color one more important factor is the number of water molecules or by hydrating the water uh, by hydrating the metal complexes mm -hmm. it can show different uh, wide variety of colors similarly let us illustrate one example during the chemical reactions or ligand exchange processes the colors of the compounds also changes like nickel hexa aqua complex when this nickel hexa aqua complex when reacted with ethylene diamine what is ethylene diamine it is a bivalent or bidentate ligand bidentate ligand the resulting nickel h2o complex when interacted with ethylene diamine actually hexa aqua nickel complex exist in green color when it interacted with these two produce nickel h2o4 en plus 2 of course water molecules and ethylene diamine as neutrals uh, neutral molecules or neutral ligands they will be with this and the resulting compound will show pale blue color what will be the expected one instead of two water molecule one ethylene diamine bidentate ligand substituted in place of water molecule plus two water molecules h2o similarly now the resulting this pale blue color of complex when interacted with one more molecule of ethylene diamine then the resulting compound out of four water molecules two water molecules are eliminated out in place of this two ethylene diamines are substitution substitution takes place then the resulting compound is blue or purple in color similarly when the resulting compound again reacts with one more molecule of ethylene diamine then finally it results as the formation of three ethylene diamines substituted onto nickel and results as the formation of violet color with the formation of two water molecules here here is also two water molecules that means by changing the number of water molecules or by substituting uh, one type of ligand with other ligand the color properties of coordination complexes also become changes and the most important condition based on this statement is 
color of some gemstones color of some gemstones actually color stones are available these color stones due to presence of various types of transition metal ions due to presence of transition metal ions transition metal ions they will exert colors example let us consider one example ruby actually the ruby is a nothing but al2o3 ruby is a alumina it is a chemical composition al2o3 with 0 to 0 0.5 to 1 percentage of chromium ions chromium ions so these are color uh, the color properties for stones once again the stones will have different colors due to presence of transition metal ions so this is color property of coordination compounds limitations of crystal field theory as we know that crystal field theory is very successful in formation and to explain the structure and to explain the color and magnetic properties of coordination complexes but some failures are identified or some limitations are identified they are every ligand is considered as point pole structure in such case actually negatively charged ligands have to works as strong field ligands than neutral field ligand because the negative charge have to more repulse the d orbitals than neutral ligand but practically the negatively charged ligands are starting in the spectrochemical series and remains as weak field ligand where the neutral species can works as or used as strong field ligand can act as strong field ligand so this is the most important and limitation that we identified with crystal field theory so the remaining aspects related to structure formation properties of coordination compounds explained with the help of ligand field theory and molecular orbital theory which are not present in our discussion in during this course so this is about coordination compounds cf crystal field theory